This is Dennis McMahon and welcome to Positively Vermont. And today we are going to be exploring a very interesting facility uh, here in Vermont, the Lake Champlain Maritime Museum. And my guest is Susan Evans McClure, uh, the Executive Director of the Lake Champlain Maritime Museum. Welcome to Positively Vermont. Thank you so much for having me, Dennis. Tell us a little bit about yourself first and how you became involved with this. Well, I'm new to the museum, although the museum is not new, but I've been there for just about two months. And um, I spent some time in Vermont after college and then was just most recently living in Washington, D.C., uh, working at the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History. So I have a real background uh, and education and passion for the work that museums can do in our communities. And uh, when I moved back to Vermont a year ago, I was working as the executive director of VSA Vermont, a great statewide organization that does arts education and development for people with disabilities. And when I saw the opportunity at the Lake Champlain Maritime Museum, I was happy to, sad to leave VSA Vermont, but really happy to return to museums, especially in a great place like Vermont. That's great. And uh, tell us uh, about the museum itself, its history, how it got started. And where it is, actually. Yeah, so the museum is located um, just outside of Virgins, on the right next to Basin Harbor and the Basin Harbor Club. The museum was founded in the mid-80s and has been around since then. We have a wide collection of um, objects related to the maritime history of Lake Champlain. So we are a, an archaeology and history museum. So what we re really focus on and look at is the relationship between the people and the water and the place over time. So how were the choices people made, the actions they took, how were they impacted by the lake and how did the lake impact them from the beginning of people living in this region up to today and hopefully into the future. We hope that all of our programs help people feel motivated to take action in their own communities. Great. Could you give us a, a, an overview of what the facility is like, the, the buildings and the, and the, the, the uh, vessels as well? Tell us what it looks like. Yeah, so the museum started with one building, which was an old schoolhouse that was moved onto the site uh, in the mid-80s. And we've since ballooned up to 18 different buildings on site and some waterfront on Lake Champlain. So each building has uh, some exhibitions or education spaces. We have a blacksmith forge. We have exhibitions on the science and um, archaeological history of the lake. And then we have a large exhibition on the Battle of Valcour Island which connects directly to our replica boat, the Philadelphia. So the Philadelphia was one of the boats that sunk during the Battle of Valcour Island in 1776. That boat was taken out of the lake in the 1930s. It was fully intact on the bottom of the lake, and it was put in the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History, where it still is today. Um, we have a replica boat, replica being exactly the same, built from the same um, models, that is on the water so visitors can go to the Philadelphia, step on board the ship, and really step back into what it was like to be on a gunboat in 1776, which is a pretty amazing opportunity. Uh, we're open to the public from May through October, so we're open for museum visits. You can come on site, check out our exhibitions and our experiences, but then we also do education programs year-round. So in addition to our exhibitions, we have school programs where we partner with schools around the region to do programming related to history, archaeology, and the ecology of the lake. Um, we also do boat building programs. One of our longest running programs is called Champlain Longboats. It's a really wonderful project where we actually work with students who come on site into our boat shop and they build a boat. And yeah, and I'm um, particularly excited about that project as it's such a wonderful example of hands-on learning in a museum setting but doing something that's really meaningful for kids. So we bring students into the program every year to build the boat from scratch. And then the boats themselves are used in our uh, rowing program, which we actually work with five regional high schools. And we have about 200 high school students who do a competitive rowing program in the spring and fall. And they, pra they train on Otter Creek and in Virgins, And then they also train in um, in Burlington, in Lake Champlain. And then they will race against each other. They do regional regattas. And um, it's a really great opportunity for kids to get involved in sport and activity, but with a deep historical connection to the lake. That's amazing. But tell us about this vessel, the Lois McClure. 
So the Lois McClure, no relation to me, McClure, I should add, but um, a wonderful person who's left leaving a huge impact on Vermont and on the Lake Champlain Maritime Museum. The Lois McClure is an 18 schooner, 1860s replica schooner, canal schooner. So the uh, Lake Champlain was really kind of a thoroughfare of transportation, um, almost like a like the super highway of its time in the 19th century. Um, there would be boats moving items from the St. Lawrence, from the Atlantic Ocean to the St. Lawrence Seaway, down the St. Lawrence River, down the Richelieu Canal, into Lake Champlain, down the Champlain Canal, and then from there at Albany, the goods would, would either go down the Erie Canal and to the west or down to the Hudson River to New York City. So the Lake Champlain was kind of right in the center of all of this commerce and traffic and shipping. Canal boats were a special style of boat that was meant to be full of goods that were moved on the canal. So they were actually designed to be pulled by oxen. So the boats, um, if you can imagine a fairly narrow canal, you wouldn't have the sails up on a canal. You'd have oxen on either side of the canal on the side um, on the ground actually pulling the boat along. So our replica is a uh, replica of an 1860s canal boat. Same thing, designed to be pulled by oxen um, or people. You can actually also pull it with human power. When we travel the boat, it travels with uh, the Churchill, which is a tugboat. So that boat is what pulls it along as well. You can pull up the sails on it um, if you're into that kind of adventure. <laughs> but um, So that boat really allows us to take the story of Lake Champlain and its importance to the entire region. So every summer we do a different tour with the boat. Last year we partnered with the Corning Museum of Glass and did an amazing tour through um, all the way down to New York City and then all the way out the Erie Canal to Corning, New York. And we created a glass barge where they were actually blowing glass on the boat, which was a really neat thing to see. And we actually saw about 30,000 visitors to the boat last year. That's amazing. This year, we are happy to be working with the um, Lake Champlain Basin Program and the Champlain Valley National Heritage Partnership to have the theme for the year be related to the International Year of the Salmon. Really? I don't know if you've heard of the International yes. Year of the Salmon, oh, let's but, hear about it. <laughs> but the um, International Year of the Salmon is an international cel celebration marking the importance of the history, um, ecology, and science of North Atlantic salmon. Lake Champlain is one of the only landlocked bodies that has North Atlantic salmon still. Uh, they spawn in the rivers and streams that connect to the lake, and then they go back into the lake. There are not very many of them left, but they've had a huge impact on Lake Champlain's region over time, and they have been hugely impacted by environmental change over time as well. So the International Year of the Salmon uh, are many efforts around the world actually dedicated at highlighting highlighting these stories. So the Lois McClure will be highlighting some of the stories about the impact of North Atlantic salmon this year. It's amazing. Uh, in, in addition to the, the history aspect, uh, tell us about, about the science aspect of uh, the museum and, and its work. So the museum is home to the um, Marine Research Institute, which is an underwater archaeology center, really one of the most um, impactful and well-known around the country. We partner with universities, researchers, um, historians who really are looking at underwater archaeology. So marine archaeology and underwater, underwater archaeology is, as the name suggests, the field of going into water, diving, finding shipwrecks and other materials, um, and then doing research on those, deciding the best way to preserve them, making, avail making them available to the public, sometimes removing them from the water and conserving them. But that, that field of research is something that the Maritime Museum has become a real leader in around the world. And the Marine Research Institute actually does projects both on Lake Champlain, on the Hudson River, on some of the, um, the Finger Lakes in New York, and beyond that, that really is looking at how to best preserve the underwater resources, underwater resources that are still out there. One of the big projects that we do every year at the museum is that we actually manage Vermont's underwater preserve sites as in partnership with the Vermont Office of Historic Preservation. So you may have heard of historic sites that you would go visit mm -hmm. in Vermont. You can drive to them or get there and see a great, um, great location that's well preserved and interpreted for the public. The underwater historic preserves are the same idea, but they're underwater. So there's nine of them in Vermont, they're shipwrecks. And um, we manage the sites, so we go to them every year, make sure they're in good condition, uh, put out markers so that divers can access them. And all of that information can be accessed on our website where we make it available to people um, 
and track, you know, work with them to, to tell them when the preserves are open, when they're closed, how they can access the site safely and have a great historic experience um, as a diver on Lake Champlain. What kind of shipwrecks are out there? There's a wide range. Uh, lake Champlain actually has about 300 shipwrecks uh, in the lake, which is pretty amazing. I think it's one of the things that living in, having lived in Vermont for a long time, right in Burlington, I looked at the lake almost every day and never really thought about that. But it's, it's pretty amazing the history that is at the bottom of the lake and kind of the sides of the lake too. Um, there's boats there from all the way back to the French and Indian War, Revolutionary War boats the, on, in the lake. Um, canal boats up through the 1800s and into the 1900s. Uh, some of them are easier to access than others. And actually, at, if you come to the museum, you can take a boat tour that uses a remote operated vehicle, so an ROV, that we as a little camera on a robot, pretty much, that we drop into the water. And you can take a boat out to where the wreck is. We'll drop the camera in and right from the boat, you can take a kind of a video tour of the wreck underneath the boat. That's amazing. Tell us a little bit about the Battle of Valcour Island. So the Battle of Valcour Island um, is one of my favorite topics, actually. I'm I glad you it. asked. <laughs> um, the Battle of Valcour Island was in 1776. It was a real turning point in the Revolutionary War. Interestingly, it was a battle that the United States lost, but in some ways, by losing, they were able to turn the tide of the war. So Benedict Arnold, the Benedict Arnold that you're probably familiar with, <laughs> He started by being a hero of the Revolutionary War. So he was leading a fleet of boats on Lake Champlain uh, in battle with the Royal Navy, the British Navy. So the British were coming south from Canada. Benedict Arnold's um, job was to prevent them from going through Lake Champlain. Once the British got through Lake Champlain, they would be able to access the Hudson River and have be able to effectively split the colonies in 1776. So the battle happened in the fall and Benedict Arnold uh, realized that they were going to lose, basically. <laughs> they had, it was clear that they were outgunned, out, um, outmaneuvered by the British Navy, who had much more experience in naval warfare. So Benedict Arnold's uh, boats are captured, and it was, as it tends to be, it can be very foggy on Lake Champlain, so Benedict Arnold's boats were captured, a fog descended, and they, um, the British were on their boats, the Americans were on their boats, and they basically said, okay, in the morning, we'll take your boats, we'll go on our way south, you're all our prisoners. So Benedict Arnold, thinking, you know, I really don't have anything to lose, decided to escape with the fleet. So it was a foggy night, it was really dark. He lined up the boats in one single line and didn't use lights. He only had one light at the front, the very front boat and one light in the back. And he sailed them under cover of darkness um, to get away. And pretty much when the British woke up in the morning and the sun came up, they said, where are the boats? What happened? Um, some of the boats, he, he intentionally ran the boats aground. Some of them he lit on fire. Some of the boats had sunk during the battle itself mm -hmm. the previous day. So because this, um, this affair kind of took so long uh, and because winter was quickly descending, the British decided, and the British were pretty um, embarrassed that they had let a fleet of boats get away during the night. So they decided to, that it, they couldn't continue further south because of the weather, because they had been so delayed by this battle. So they had to wait until the spring of 1777, effectively giving the colonies more time um, to muster more resources and get the French involved in the war. That's amazing. And a really interesting example of one, um, a, history, a story about history that you think you know a lot about, right? If you think about Benedict Arnold, everyone thinks, oh, well, what do you think about Benedict Arnold? Well, was, actually, I was reading a book about this very uh, battle. Um, I think it's called Blind Ambition or Grand Ambition. Or mm -hmm. Somebody mentions that battle right in the, in the book. Yeah, so, you know, we, you learn in high school, really, that Benedict Arnold was the greatest traitor of American history. But before he became a traitor, he was a hero and really um, helped the Americans win the Revolutionary War before he worked against them. So those stories about complexity in history are ones that get me really excited about why we learn history today. Understanding that Benedict Arnold made individual decisions and he was a really complex character um, is, is something that you can learn from today, both about how individual people make decisions today and how everyone is part of history. What kind of artifacts do you have uh there from, from that particular conflict? So we have um, a major exhibition about the Battle of Valcour Island um, and many um, pieces that were found from boats. So we have a, you know, a cannon, uh, a lot of cannon shot. Um, 
as well as some great um, art, art pieces that kind of let you see the battle as well. Tell us a little bit about the, uh, the educational aspect of this, uh, how you network with uh, local schools. We have uh, great partnerships with many of the school districts in um, Addison County and beyond. Uh, the school programs, in addition to our boat building program that I mentioned, we also do a lot of partnership programming where we go out into the schools, connect them with some of that history ecology work I was talking about. Um, and then we also welcome students on site. So many schools come to the Lake Champlain Maritime Museum for their spring and fall field trips where they get to experience um, the 17, what our field trip is called 1776, and you get to experience some of that history of Valcor Island and the Revolutionary War right here in Vermont. That's great. Tell us about, you, you have a series of summer camps? We do have summer camps. Tell us about that. Uh, summer camp registration is now open, so if people are looking for things to do with their kids in the summer, uh, we do summer camps for kids of all ages, some day camps, some overnight. And the camps uh, really run the gamut. Again, we have a history-focused camp. We have camps that are about um, experiencing the lake, so about how to boating. We have a fishing camp. We have um, camps about scuba diving. So really, our all of our camps are about how do we get people connected to the lake in ways that will inspire them to stay connected and make a difference in the future. So our day camps run through June, July, and I think some of August, maybe just July. All the information's on the website. Uh, but in addition to those day camps, we have expedition camps and overnight camps. So those camps, um, there's two one-week camps that are full overnight experiences on the lake where you're on the lake the whole time uh, camping with your group. And then our, um, another one of our programs is actually a five-week camp where you spend the first three weeks building your own boat and then you spend the last two weeks overnight um, traveling from Whitehall, New York to Burlington on the lake. That's amazing. But how many people are involved in this over here? So we have, um, over the course of the year, we have about 75 staff who are um, full-time and seasonal. So it, again, we're open to the public May through October. So it, that tends to be a lot, a lot busier. We have a smaller staff in the winter. Um, but it's in addition to those 75 people, we have um, many, many volunteers who work on our programs who we're so grateful for. We couldn't do what we do without our volunteers. And then we have great partners in the school districts and communities nearby. It's amazing. But I understand you're also involved in professional development activities. Tell us what that, that's all about. We are. We um, work with teachers throughout the state and the region to do profes accredited professional development courses during the summer. And those also um, have a wide range of topics. Um, some are about teaching with objects. So how can teachers be using historical objects in their classroom as a way to spark interest in their students. And then we also partner with the Abnaki Artists Association uh, to bring Abnaki culture leaders to teachers to talk about teaching Abnaki culture in the classroom. That's a really special one week um, experience that brings teachers and Abnaki culture bearers together for a way to increase um, increase the knowledge around Abnaki culture that's right here in Vermont um, and to highlight the importance of teaching that for Vermont students. That's great. And what is the uh, Champlain Longboats program? So Champlain Longboats is the boat building program that I mentioned that brings students to the museum to build a boat and then um, other students row, row those boats on the lake. And uh, you have community rowing, what's that about? We do. So it's not just kids who can row on the lake. Uh, we have community rowing at the museum and in Burlington. So um, twice a week at the museum in Virgins, uh, we have rowing where people can just come on down, adults can come on down to the museum and get with a few other people in a, in a boat and go out and row. <laughs> and then we also do that in Burlington once a week as well. And that's a way for us to um, bring adults together and community members and do some fun activity and take in the, the beautiful beautiful views in the summer. It's especially important to think about when we're coming up on our you know, 15th snowstorm that one day soon you will be out on the lake rowing on a boat in that's, a sunny day. That's amazing. Uh, one aspect that I noticed from the website is the uh, metal arts. Tell us what that's about. We also do classes um, where we, uh, around metal arts. So blacksmithing, bladesmithing, copper, um, copper work, and those are opportunities for adults to learn from experts in 
the um, crafts of metal arts. So those are weekend long classes or one day classes where you can come in and in our, for example, in our bladesmithing class, you can come in and learn how to build a knife using the blacksmith forge. That's amazing. Yeah. It's a fun opportunity and a great way to connect with history and be reminded that some of those, um, the same, some of the same processes that people were doing uh, even during the Revolutionary War are things that you can still be engaging in today, usually with an updated twist. And you have a very uh, excellent website, and uh, which leads me to a question, what about digital projects? What, what does that entail? So there's only so many people that can come to um, rural Addison County to visit our museum. We would love it to be more. We're always welcome to have more people come. But we really see the um, access through the internet and social media as a way for us to share the work that we're doing and also to learn about the work of other people. The great thing about social media now is it's a real conversation. So you can um, bring together people in dialogue around um, topics that are related to the museum's content collections. That's amazing. Now, what about uh, community participation? What, what uh, are, are you looking for uh, from the community to assist or, or work with you on various projects and support your efforts? Oh, well, thank you so much for asking. Well, we, um, as I said, rely on our volunteers for so much of what we do. They're an amazing resource. They bring their experiences to the museum, and we hope they get something from working with us, too, as they do. So um, we're always open to people who are interested in volunteering, and you can find that contact information on our website. And um, we also invite everyone to the museum this summer when we open and to keep an eye out for the Lois McClure as she's sailing around the lake this summer. And our summer camps are a real opportunity for people to jump in, actually jump into the lake, as many of them involve, but also to jump into what we do with both feet. That's great. Well, tell us about membership. Do you have a membership program? We do have a membership program. Uh, membership is a terrific way to stay connected with the museum. Uh, if you become a member of the Lake Champlain Maritime Museum, you get um, free entry to the museum and discounts on all of the camps and classes and workshops that I was just going on and on about. So it's a great way to support our work in a sustaining way, but then also to be able to access it and make it part of your life. That's great. Now, as we sit here in, in the, the dead of winter, uh, <laughs> Maybe you could just uh, summarize what people can expect this summer. What, what are your long and short range plans for the summer for the museum? Yeah, we'll be, like I said, opening in uh, mid to late May. Uh, and we'll actually have um, a new exhibition opening uh, on the Jehaziel Sherman and his steamboats. Tell us about an that. An interesting name and an interesting fella. He was um, one of the premier steamboat builders in the whole region, and he was based in Virgins. Um, and people have done many of his steamboats, wrecks of his steamboats are actually still in the lake. Uh, he was really important to the Virgins region in the early 1800s. Um, early to mid 1800s, uh, and all of Addison County. Many scholars have studied him, people have looked into his work for years, and he has a great name to boot. But until this year, no one had ever seen him before because there were no portraits of him that we knew of. And in fact, just this past year, we were contacted by someone who said, hey, I have a portrait of Jehaziel Sherman and another one of his wife. You know, can we talk about it? And our curators said, I don't think that's possible. No one's ever seen one before. Uh, but through some diligent research, it turned out that they, he was absolutely right. The story totally checked out, and they are portraits of Jehaziel and his wife uh, then, that we're happy to bring, bring back to Virgins and put on display for the public, and then be able to talk about the impact of steamboat technology on the, the lake. Well, that's amazing. Uh, it really sounds like you have a a fascinating uh, facility and a fascinating series of programs. Thanks. It's a, um, I'm really lucky to be there. It's a great team that works at the museum. Uh, it's been wonderful to meet our supporters and our community members who really see the museum um, as I do, which is why I was interested in working there as just a real resource of the community and a great way to stay connected to Lake Champlain. That's great. Well, this has been uh, Dennis McMahon for Positively Vermont. And my guest today has been Susan Evans McClure, uh, the executive director of the Lake Champlain Maritime Museum. Thank you for watching.